Don't worry, darling, it's a really good movie. You're completely delusional, you have no idea what you're talking about. Trust me, I'm a man, so I can't be wrong. The critics really hated this one, though on paper it seems like the kind of movie that would make a film critic's toes curl up, but the Rotten Tomatoes scores actually suggest the opposite. It didn't help that the behind-the-scenes controversy completely overshadowed the movie. Originally, Shia LaBeouf was supposed to play the male lead, though he was too toxically masculine to play a toxic male in a movie about toxic masculinity. LaBeouf was replaced by Harry Styles, who isn't anywhere near toxic enough for the role. The original working title for the film was The Toxic Man Venger. It's obvious the only reason Harry Styles got the acting gig was because he was dating the director, but they've called it quits because this movie was that poorly received. There were reports on set of screaming fights between director Olivia Wilde and lead Florence Pugh, though later 40 members of the crew signed a statement saying it was all untrue. Sounds like a cover-up to me. Then there was the award show moment where it looked like Harry Styles walked up to Chris Pine and spit in his lap. Internet investigators spent weeks examining the footage without a definitive conclusion. Harry makes an odd movement with his head that looks like he's hawking a loogie as he goes to sit down. It could be that Chris Pine was looking for his sunglasses and realized they were sitting in his lap when he looked down. It's also possible that Harry Styles just spat on Chris Pine unprovoked, though I feel this would be a pretty calm response on Pine's part. There was more online commentary regarding Spitgate than there was about the actual movie, which was kind of a bad sign. The 75% positive audience score suggests that other viewers connected more with the themes than I did. I thought it was a hackneyed premise handled with all the delicacy of a sledgehammer, as a bunch of men all chant, Whose world? Our world. Whose world is this? <laughs> Nostalgia for the 1950s on the soundtrack is used like a crutch. They went overboard with the licensed pop music from the time. When the movie begins, it feels as if every scene is accompanied by a famous song. In the first scene of the movie, there's a shot of Olivia Wilde's character Bunny making a really goofy face. I considered using this shot of the film for the thumbnail of the review because it's attention grabbing, but I also don't want the video to make me look like some kind of misogynistic Frank. This shot of Alice taking a bite of Jack's carrot would also make a funny thumbnail, but it's possibly too sexually suggestive. Then there's the surreal scene where the walls are closing in on Alice and pressing her face up against the glass. This would also make an appropriate thumbnail, but it's not the most flattering look for Florence Pugh. There's also the shot where she wraps saran wrap around her face, which again would make for an attention-grabbing thumbnail, but she's attempting to suffocate herself, so possibly a little too violent for the thumbnail? This is a movie where you don't want to spoil the big twists with the thumbnail, so the safest thumbnail will probably just be a tasteful shot of Alice and Jack. Don't Worry Darling opens with a group of rich idiots drinking martinis and doing donuts out in a convertible. It immediately feels surreal, a satire of the wealthy who pass through life in a drunken daze, in the vein of La Dolce Vita. Following this scene, all of the men get in their cars and ride off to a huge mountain base, where they presumably work for some kind of Bond villain. He's even got a big banner that reads, Tomorrow the World! Florence Pugh plays Alice, a housewife in a cult-like community who pursues a hidden truth. Harry Styles plays Jack, her hard-working husband who loves to go down on her. And Frank is the cult leader who has built the community and forbids anyone from leaving. Frank is introduced in a scene with an obnoxiously long lens flare. I understand the artistic decision to slip in a lens flare because they can be visually interesting, but the lens flare hangs right on Chris Pine's face for the entire scene. The director is suggesting an artificiality in Frank's character, but like most of the movie's messaging, it's done with a heavy hand rather than a light touch. There are elements of the film that I appreciate. For example, the set design is thoughtful. Alice's bathroom is constructed with multiple mirrors. I'm a sucker for a good mirror shot, and there are multiple shots in this film that suggest Alice's fractured mental state through a wall of reflections. The technical aspects of the film, the cinematography, the editing, are done well, but it's the story that is so unoriginal. It feels less like an homage and more like a lesser version of greater films. It tries to walk the fine balance between sci-fi blockbuster and cerebral arthouse film, and falls flat on its face. It's The Truman Show, but it's gaslighting. Or, it's The Matrix, but it's end cells. The big reveal is that Harry Styles is actually a loser with long greasy hair, 
and his girlfriend won't have sex with him because she's too tired after working 30-hour shifts as a nurse. So he kidnaps her and traps her in a virtual reality where she's a 1950s housewife. And anytime she questions her reality, everyone around her goes, You're crazy, woman. Am I going to have to chain you to that stove to keep you in the kitchen? Each day when all the guys leave for work, they leave the simulation and go to work jobs in the real world so they can keep paying for their online sex slave live service. Harry Styles is a handsome pop star, so it's kind of hard to imagine that he wouldn't be able to get laid and would have to brainwash someone just to get his rocks off, so they give him long hair and glasses and just like that, now he's an incel. There's a doctor character who's supposed to be an intimidating presence, but he's played by Jonah Ryan from Veep, who isn't threatening at all. It makes it a little hard to take his presence seriously. I'm not criticizing his performance, I just think it was bad casting. They hired comedic actors like Nick Kroll for this movie, but this isn't a comedy. Don't Worry Darling's big reveal at the end is telegraphed so heavily, most people are already going to have it figured out in the first act. Everything about the homogenized world appears as artificial. There are a lot of minor clues. The name of the main character, Alice, as in Alice in Wonderland, already tells us that she's not in the real world. Her husband Jack covers her eyes while they go on a joyride. He's concealing her vision of the truth. Alice goes to crack an egg, but there's no yolk inside. It looks like an egg, but it isn't. It's a simulacrum of the real thing. Alice is looking at a map of the community. It's surrounded by mountains, and there's nothing outside of it. It's built like a prison, a panopticon with a central location, which is Frank's house. Frank is the antagonist of the film, and was directly based on Jordan B. Peterson. He's an intellectual self-help guru with a podcast called Organized Chaos, and his fans are all young men who can't get any. I can't comment on the validity of Peterson's work because I've never read any of his books. Then again, I already knew how to make my bed. Peterson called this movie woke, but I'm going to refrain from using that word as it has lost all meaning at this point. Chris Pine's Frank ends up being like a version of Peterson who doesn't cry on camera. He just gets killed by his wife. You stupid, stupid man. Critics praised Pine's performance because he seemed to be having fun playing a smarmy villain, but I thought his character was too one note to be interesting. Harry Styles acting in this movie is not good. What? You were miserable. You were so unhappy. You hated your life. This is a major problem because he's one of the lead characters and is given several big dramatic scenes that fall flat. He's at his best when he's dancing, a little more in his wheelhouse. Styles is obviously giving the role his best shot, but when he really had to emote, it just wasn't that believable to me. Professional film critics tore his performance apart, The New Yorker calling him utterly and helplessly adrift, but I'll just say there's a lot of room for improvement. Florence Pugh's acting is great, and she's able to prop Harry up a little, but some of these scenes just needed more work. I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Let me be I'm sorry! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't Worry Darling is a highly ambitious film, and the filmmaking just couldn't match all of the weighty ideas in the script. Olivia Wilde confirmed that Don't Worry Darling was inspired by The Truman Show, The Matrix, and Inception, the only difference being that those films are actually good. Alice eventually kills Jack in order to escape, and in the final act they throw in the if you die here, you die in the real world rule to make the stakes a little bigger. She jumps in a convertible, and Jordan Peterson's incel army is after her. In the final act of the film, it suddenly tries to be an action movie with a car chase scene, and this is where it really became unintentionally hilarious to me. Stop her, you idiots! Alice crashes her car, and all these horny, lonely men in red suits are chasing her up a mountain. I was just laughing. It feels like Olivia Wilde was going for a deep, meaningful film, but it fails in its execution, and for me, it came across as kind of preachy and self-righteous. Olivia Wilde's character, Bunny, gets this big moment in the final act where she reveals that she knows the world is artificial but stays there anyway because in real life her kids have passed away, yet in the virtual world she can have them back. It seems kind of ego-driven that Olivia Wilde not only directed the film but decided that she herself would play this character and get a big dramatic monologue during the final act. I usually like it more when directors just do cameos in their films. There was potential in this story about men struggling with their loss of control over society, Men are coping with the fact that they now have to share power with women, some of them romanticizing the past. As much as people love nostalgia for the past, time is only moving in one direction. However, time is also a flat circle. This whole movie was actually just an excuse to watch Harry Styles and Florence Pugh make out while Chris Pine watches from the shadows. I found Don't Worry Darling to be a below average film, somewhere in the 3 to 4 range. And I'm actually going to be a massive Frank and give this film a 3. 
because I really don't like it, and I think it's bad. But that's just my opinion. I am an alpha wolf, and this junkyard dog's coming off the chain. Wolf, wolf.